really easy to get trophies of this. Oh, okay, now we're not doing that glitch again. Ah, uh, it's not getting... Wow, I got like five trophies on this one. Dang! Well, that was really nothing new. Just wanted to ease into it just before we resume streaming. And I can't even promise this. This is going to be kind of like a tentative day. Like I said, when I streamed, what was that? Sunday? Or was it Monday? No. It wasn't even really streaming. It was just me kind of like saying, hey, these are the games I wanted to talk about. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. Yeah, okay, this is not a walkthrough. This is just basically video game trailers, but... All right. Well, we might as well acknowledge it because, hey, it, it's it's there, it's out there. Let's start with the first news. So, Call of Duty Black Ops Six. I can't believe we're on the sixth one now, but hey, they are. Well, no, I'm not too surprised. I mean, video games have to have money. I'm gonna try to sound like you. We got to have money. Pretty close. Anyway. Uh, so they're doing the, uh, I guess, an early access beta, and I'm sure you guys are aware of whoever has been through the great find of basically video game news. Uh, Black Ops 6 is having a weekend one of August 30th that go, okay, this is weekend one from August 30th to September 4th. And what that means is, weekend one, I'm reading this from PlayStation Blog, obviously you guys have probably already heard about this from YouTube and whatever. Weekend 1 is available to players who have pre-ordered the game and starts on August 30th at 10 p.m. Wait, no, sorry, not 10 p.m., 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Indie in September 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Okay, so Weekend 2 is September 6th through the 9th, which I'll be participating in. That's an open beta that, you know, for anybody who hasn't pre-ordered the game and all that. The second beta available, or the second beta weekend is available to all players and is scheduled to begin on September 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and then on September 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. So that's the first news. The second news is, there wasn't a whole lot in terms of video game trailers being released, but the one that really immediately caught my eye, that I know it won't be, whoever played this on PC, this will just be people replaying this on consoles, but the one the one game that will I look forward to, and I hope there's a release date pretty soon. To the Moon, the announcement, the announcement trailer. If you heard of To the Moon in terms of PC, it was critically acclaimed. It was one of those really retro art styles that just really tug at the heartstrings. And King Gal, wait, what's his name? Kang Gal, the guy who composes the piano music for To the Moon, is perfection. It is like literally, yeah, he's great. He's absolutely fantastic in terms of that music. So I look forward to to the moon. I know it's not to everybody's cup of tea, and that's completely okay. I, I look forward to it, and the fact that it's coming out on PlayStation Five, that's a win in my book. Because I've been thinking about that game, not like frequently, but I've been thinking about it. So there's that. But what you guys are really here for, and I'm sure you guys probably heard it. I know I'm late to the party, but I might as well announce it. Hey, these are the PlayStation Plus games that are coming on September 3rd on... Well, these are the PlayStation Plus Essential games. Are they really essential at this point? No, they're not. They're really not. Anyway, the first one, which we already knew it was coming, we just didn't have a like an official release date, but it was coming. And I might as well use Immortals Phoenix Rising because it's kind of... It's magic, and it kind of counts. Because I did not have any, like... Hogwarts Legacy, and I just didn't have any Harry Potter like besides this game. Say la vie. All right, Harry Potter. I'm not gonna. Is it supposed to be Quinditch Champions? It's awkward to say that, so I'm not gonna say it. So, Harry Potter Champions is coming on PS4, PS5 on September 3rd. Immerse yourself in the enchanting or enchanting world of. I'm not gonna pronounce it. Harry Potter's universe by playing solo or sharing the magic with friends and family. Live your Harry Potter fantasy. Harry Potter. Anyway, take to the sky as one of the classic positions chaser, seeker, keeper, or beater. That doesn't sound right. Eat with the, each with their own unique playstyle. Soar into legendary 
arenas, Harry Potter arenas specifically, and new maps that showcase never before seen areas of the Wizarding World. Of Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Now, take on career mode to progress from backyard battles in the Weasley Barrel to the high stakes showdowns at the Harry Potter World Cup. I know it's Quinditch, I just don't care to say it. I'm skipping this one. It's just another live service game, but Harry Potter. I'd rather just play Hogwarts Legacy because that actually seems like there was passion in that and actually they gave a crap about that. You're wanting me to spend my time, I know it's free to play, but you're wanting me to spend my time to play a Harry Potter live service game. Now, I'm, I'm good. We already have, we are stacked with live service game and hero shooters. Now, I'm, I'm good. Alright, let's move on to the next game. Or next clip, I guess. You have a favorite team. I guess I'll go with the Cardinals just for the sake of it. No, I'm good. The big show? Like the wrestler? No, too easy. Too easy joke. Well, anyway, MLB The Show 24 is coming on PS4, PS5. Uh, swing for the fences. Experience game. Deciding moments. Oh. Oh, crap. It's copyright. Got bear hair out. Become a legend and live out your baseball dreams and out the road to baseball greatness, whatever it is you want to achieve. MLB, the 24 house, you got you covered. All right, so I'm going to actually check this out, but I'm not in a rush to check it out because I'm still trying to finish the show 19. Okay, yep, we got in this because copyright. It's dope music, though. All right. Yeah, I had to hurry up on the... Uh, clip with the MLB the show 24 right if I didn't then YouTube would have been like oh licensed music we're gonna block your content why it's just I get the licensed music like if it was like uh, what's a song that's pretty much the uh, latest trend it's something with Megan Stallion no I know the song and I'm looking it up real quick too you know me and my wife would listen to that one too Mamushi, yeah, by Megan D. Stallion and Yuki Shibi. I know that's been kind of like a big deal in terms of that. That gosh, that video, music video, has I think a, over a million view. Yeah, great song. Just man, that video is. Uh, I would say that's controversial. A great song though. I would say that. Wait, well, wait. Anyway, uh, next. Well, the next game that we're going to talk about, it, it's been on my radar, and I'm glad I waited, because it's been out for definitely a couple years, but I'm glad I waited, because I was going to get out on sales price, but hey, hey, and it made sense to release this game, because Little Nightmares 3 comes out next year, so now I get the experience 1 and 2, so Little Nightmares 2 come out on PS4 and PS5, and now I actually have time because, well, no copyright, sweet, here we go. Discover the sinister secrets of the Signal Tower in this horror-themed platform adventure where you control Mono. Like, Mono the sound? Anyway, a young boy trapped in a distorted and broken world. You don't say since it's the sequel. Joined by the Six. Wait, the Sinister Six or the Six? No, it's not the... It's not the Six in the boys, it's the Seven. Anyway, the raincoat-wearing hero from the original Little Nightmares. Only you can help her from fading away into nothingness. As the relationship between Mono and Six grows, wow, that, this is, that's weird. Anyway, the duo must work together using a combination of stealth and array of items to overcome tricky puzzles and horrifying, terrifying enemies. Muster your courage and begin your journey in the face of terrible threats in a mission to stop the source of evil that spreads throughout the land. Or die trying! I'm excited about this one. This one, I won't cover like the day it comes out. But as soon as I'm done finishing Little Nightmares 1, then I'll immediately hit into it. And then I'll get to play the PS5 version because PS4 and PS5. Man. So, like I was told my friend, it's not bad this time around, but it's not great. I mean, they gave us Little, they gave us Little Nightmares 3, but everything else is, well, it's another sports game and it's another live service game that no one really asked for but hey maybe people will check it out because we still have harry potter fans and that's something wrong with that i mean hey there was like a lot of them back in the day and i seen like 
one, two, and three back in the day. Man, I need to get back into it. But hey, doesn't matter. So it's not bad, but it's not great. Kind of wish they really pushed for like a first party title, like freaking Horizon Forbidden West. Maybe they'll make up for it on PlayStation Plus Extra Bria or Extra Imprium or Die Drive. Maybe it's just not going to be great. Maybe set your expectation low. We'll see. But of course, you can hit that like, comment, or subscribe. What game are you excited about coming to PlayStation Extra Imprium? Not pretty up, my bad. Essential. Let's face it, it's the Little Nightmares. It's the Little Nightmares 2. That's the only game of value compared to the three games. Once again, Sony is withholding... I'll tell you what. And I, I've been seeing that a lot with the PlayStation Plus Essential May. May is where our value or our money was being well spent because we are May... We had Tunic, Ghost Runner 2, and we had some other two games, but they were kind of worth it too. May was the only time in May of the PlayStation Plus Essential where our money value was actually valued. It felt like they were cooking. And then they kind of went back to the decline. It's just that we haven't had any like solid games consistently in, except for May. I thought there was one game, like, there was actually a smorgasbord of games last year, but really, May of 2024. It's like, Sony wants us to pay more for the extra premium, and I have noticed that, but it's been happening since their subscription started in 2022, and no, I don't mean to go on the ramp, but I'm just calling it as it is, I was like, if I see something that doesn't make sense, I'm gonna call it out. <laughs> But you guys have known me because I've been doing the YouTube game for stream. I know, I'm getting off script and I'm at living, but that's kind of my old stick, so sue me. Anyway, it's that it's the fact that they want us to pay for premium and they want us to do like a year, but they know intentionally the first party titles and the games that we do want, they take it away eventually. And then they'll eventually put it in pre well, they'll eventually put it in essential. It's really the extra games they'll put in essential, but it's the fact that they they know what we want, like the PS3 titles that they absolutely should put in extra and premium, but they don't have the balls to do it. But they want us to pay for this, and they'll they want us to pay for games that we do want, and then they'll ultimately take it away. And then when we have the games that we want, essentially, or we're not getting the games that we want, we'll eventually just not buy the subscription. Well, you know those videos where they say that how you get somebody these big corporation lesson? Pretty much um, talk with your money. Or I think I'm paraphrasing what they're saying. Basically, your if you take your money away from the projects or stop buying their games for the developers, then they'll start to listen. Vote with your wallet. I I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty relevant to this day. I mean. If a lot of people, and I remember in the just reading on Google and just reading around, I know a lot of people unsubscribe from PlayStation Plus Premium and I think Extra too, just because of something happened that PlayStation just like screwed up and then now they're trying to get as much subscribers as usual. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. PlayStation is probably losing a good significant uh, amount of subscribers. And who knows if Xbox Game Pass is losing a lot of subscribers too. I have to just double check on that. I don't know. But in terms of PlayStation Plus subscribers, myself, I can see why people are dropping off and all that. Because all of the solid games that they promised us in the beginning of 2022, they are ultimately leaving. Marvel Spider-Man, that's gone. Horizon Forbidden West, that's gone. Who knows? Ghost of, I, I really hope like majority of the first person titles stay a good while or at least give them like three years or keep them them consistently. You need a selling point. You need games to kind of keep them the subscribers coming. Otherwise, what's the point? They'll just kind of go to Xbox Game Pass where they know those games will be around for a good while and they people already have played them. And plus they have day one games. I mean, that's not, like, bad, but, eh, that's a, another story. Well, anyway, I just kind of wanted to go into a little rant because I'm kind of like, hey, 
PlayStation, give us the games, like, give us the games that we want. Stop giving us sport games all the time. I don't mind sports game. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with sports game. But stop giving us sports game just for the sake of it. Nobody doesn't really care about sports game that all the time. We want sports games that are great, but we don't want it every single month. We don't. I mean, I get it, it's the most cheapest option and whatever, but it just doesn't make sense to give us a sports game every month. I mean, change it up. I mean, at least in May, you seem like you were trying to change it up and actually listen kind of gave a damn about player feedback. But no, you just kind of give a sports game every single time. I'm cool with the indie titles. Absolutely. Like Skull, the Hero Slayer, games like that, keep them coming. Like Dev Store, keep them coming. Dude, keep them coming. Indie games... I'm all for it, but stop, kind of, give us a break from sports game, or heck, give us another first party title like Playtale Requiem, I think we are aching for it, we absolutely want that, but sure, we'll get an extra premium, but the essential, come on, I think you guys have the money, you have the, no, you guys absolutely have the money, just do it, alright, well, I've been talking about this bandwagon, my gosh, I feel like last year, are they ever going to change PlayStation, Sony? No, they're not. They're not. Because unless we vote with our money, pretty much unsubscribe, and I'm not telling you guys to unsubscribe. I'm basically saying, hey, it, it's basically your decision at the end of the day. But really think about it like, am I, is my time being value? That's the one thing. Am I getting the content that my money is paying for? That's the second thing to think of. And is the subscription really giving me all the video games that I absolutely want? Including the PS3 games that they're not giving us. That's the three things to kind of take away from this. I know, that was a weird tone and that was... I, I guess this is kind of considered doubted, but... I mean, it's worth analogy. I, I feel like I've been talking about this since last year. Or maybe 2022. I don't think I had a problem in 2022... Because they actually gave us a smorgasbord smorgas of games that would keep us, keep us occupied for months. And I was excited about July 2022. I think that's when that new subscription came out. Because we had plenty of games. Now, majority of the games that we got are gone. Or they are actually gone. Or, new, or they're on the individual subscription. But they are gone. Which absolutely sucks. Alright, well that's the takeaway from that. And I want to say to the... And if I don't see you guys, I will say my catchphrase. But tentatively, once again, and I hope I can actually be consistent about this, focusing the extra and premium games that came out in August, I guess mid-August now, or a, a little bit after mid-August, try to focus on it. But I am on part two of Time Splitters, and I will just pretty much let you guys know what is going to be the next game, and just so I'm consistent. Yeah, that kind of sums it up. But, like I said, you can leave a like, comment, or subscribe if I don't do any streaming. And of course, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and whatever time zone you're in. And I'll see you at the next video game clip. I know, I didn't add that usual phrase, but, eh, fun and long day. Anyway, moving on to the next clip if we're going to do it.